Okay, so our um, next topic for today is about the financial environment. So, of course, this is for our module number two. Okay, so before we start the discussion, so let us have a short overview about the content of this module. So, this module is about the financial environment in which transactions of the different parties with financial interest take place. The financial environment also is the avenue of buying and selling financial instruments to acquire additional funds and provide investment opportunities to those who supply the capital. So you students will learn about the different types of financial institutions and markets, the various classification of financial markets, the classification of um, instruments or financial instruments and its forms, and we'll also have the idea about some of the most controversial financial crises that happened in the history of finance. So these concepts will help you to understand better the field of finance as part of the business world and the economy as well. So for the learning outcomes, at the end of this module, you students should be able to first Demonstrate understanding of the different types of financial institutions and markets. Be familiarized and uh, be able to identify the various classifications of financial markets. Third, demonstrate understanding of the financial instruments and also familiarize the different forms. Fourth, um, familiarize some of the most controversial financial crises in history. For the contents of this module, so we have four, um, we will be discussing about financial institutions, financial markets and its classification, financial instruments and its classification, and the financial crisis. So to start with, we will discuss about financial institutions. Okay. So basically, when we say financial institution, this is a company or entity that is engaged in the business of dealing with financial and monetary transactions. So these transactions include deposits, loans, investments, and currency exchange. So it includes, of course, banks, trust companies, insurance companies, brokerage firms, and investment dealers. So again, when we say financial institutions, these are the entity that are uh, mainly engaged in financial and monetary transactions. So some of the examples that we have mentioned along with this uh, definition, uh, we will discuss each of them as follows. So here are the different types of financial institutions. Okay, of course. So the first in the list is the commercial banks. Okay, so when we say commercial banks, of course, you're already familiar with this. Okay, so financial or commercial banks are the type of uh, financial institution that accepts deposit, offers checking account services, makes business, uh, maybe personal accounts for market, mortgage loans. They also offer basic financial products like certificate of deposit and savings accounts to individuals and small businesses. So again, um, commercial banks are the most common type of a financial institution that you are familiar with. So if you can see in the screen, we have there the different uh, banks that are operating, uh, especially here in the Philippines. So we are familiar with them. So again, they are considered to be a type of financial institution because um, if we are going to look back at the definition of a financial institution, they are qualified because um, the monetary and financial transactions takes place in a bank, like deposits, loans, and the like. Okay, so that is the first type of financial institution. 
Okay. So the second type is what we call trust companies. So here, when we say trust companies, they are a separate corporate entity that is owned also or maybe owned by a bank or other financial institution, law firm, or an independent partnership. So the function of the uh, trust company is to manage the trusts trust funds, and estates for individuals, businesses, and other entities. So this is an arrangement also that allows uh, a third party or the trustee or the trust company to hold assets or property for the beneficiary or beneficiaries. So if you could see in the screen, um, this illustration uh, shows us the three main um, the three main function of a trust company. So it serves as a settlor, meaning um, here, if the beneficiary is now qualified to receive the trust or the asset, uh, it will now be. Um, complied and delivered by the trust to the beneficiary so it also or the trust company also serves as a protector of the trust being um uh, being entrusted or given okay, in behalf of the beneficiary and of course um for the distribution also of those assets in behalf of the beneficiary. So actually, I'm going to say trust company. So the setup is, for example, um, there is a property, okay? And uh, this property uh, will be, or the owner of this, uh, or the, the ownership of this property will be transferred to a minor. So in our law, um, if you are considered as a minor, you are not yet allowed to hold the ownership or manage a property unless you uh, attain the proper and legal age. So, um, since you are not yet, or the beneficiary is not yet um, qualified to handle or to own the, the property, then uh, that property will be... Uh, given to the trust company so the trust company will now act as a uh, protector of that asset on behalf of the beneficiary so any transactions um that is within the the, the consent of the uh, beneficiary or other uh, parties who may have uh, the control or interest also over the property uh, that is given to the trust company. So that is the the, the extent of uh, uh, actions that a trust company can make. And then when the time comes that the beneficiary is now uh, in his or her legal age, so this time the trust company will transfer or distribute the asset okay, to the beneficiary as the uh, principal and uh, lawful uh, owner of that particular uh, asset or property. So this is just one uh, example. So there are others, uh, transactions also that can be entrusted to the trust companies like other assets of a business in behalf of the other parties or the owners and the like. Okay, so again, um, they are also in to the financial and monetary uh, transactions, basically engaged in the protection and handling of assets and property, which are also considered as part of the financial um, transactions. Okay, so the third is investment banks. Okay, so when we say investment banks, they specialize in providing services designed to facilitate business operations such as capital expenditure, 
uh, financing and equity offerings, including initial public offerings or IPOs. They also commonly offer uh, brokerage uh, services for investors, act as market makers for trading exchanges, and manage mergers, acquisitions, and other corporate restructuring. So here, the corporations will sell their bonds, either their bonds or shares to the investment banks, to the post potential investors who may be an institution also or an individual. So the investment bank also serves as the sell side on behalf of the corporations. So they con contact both the parties to sell the bonds or the shares. So here, the investors or the fund managers are known as the buy side of the contract. So here, um, when we say investment banks, um, this is where um, buying and selling of equity and a share equity shares or bonds no, will take place so it acts as a uh, intermediary between the corporations who are offering or selling their shares or bonds to the institutions who are willing to invest okay so this is the place where they can uh, transact those uh, financial uh, transaction so again uh, investment banks is different from the commercial banks because in this case they they, they deal uh, in, or investment banks deal mainly with uh, buying and selling of sh uh, equity and equity shares and bonds or capital so this is their focus but um there are also commercial banks who has the uh, branch within their uh, uh, company who also uh, has the investment uh, product services. So here, you can also um, transact uh, any equity or capital related uh, transactions if you would want. Okay, but again, their uh, uh, function is quite different because here we are focused on the capital or investment. Okay, so the fourth type of financial institution is what we call insurance companies. So insurance companies are non-banking financial institutions so they provide insurance whether for individuals or corporations so this is considered to be one of the oldest financial services in history so um, uh, protection of assets against financial risk are secured through the insurance products so this is also an essential service that facilitates individual and corporate investment that fuel economic growth so again when we say ins insurance companies okay the main purpose of insurance is to protect um, assets and other properties or even the life of a person or the property so insurance is um, is its work is to uh, protect the potential loss for example, in a property. So if you insured a particular property, let's say, for example, a building for uh, fire insurance and the building uh, got raised by a fire, so those or the, the value of the property that was uh, destroyed by the fire will be uh, paid or reimbursed by the insurance company depending on the amount that was agreed upon uh, by the contract. Okay, So there are a lot of other products as well. Like, for example, protection for your um, salary or future income in case of loss. Uh, and 
uh, insurance also can be in the form of a uh, educational uh, I mean uh, it's like a protection also in the future okay, for those uh, plans that you may have okay, in order for you to achieve those objectives okay, without uh, getting any uh, problem when it comes to uh, monetary or financial aspects because here the, the insurance company will provide okay but of course um, in order for you to uh, qualify and uh, claim those insurance you also have to pay for a monthly quarterly semi-annually or yearly uh what do you call this contribution okay so that uh, those contribution will now be used as part of the fund balance that uh, later on i uh, you will if you will qualify to claim then that will be the value that they will um provide for you so if you could note this in our uh slide we have there the oldest insurance companies as of 2020 so that's why they are considered to be one of the most uh, or the oldest i mean um finite type of financial institution so i i hope i hope you are familiar with this okay so the last type of uh, financial institution is the brokerage firms so what does brokerage firms do so here uh, they are financial institutions that handle assets also. So they employ stockbrokers to represent investors who trade in public stocks or bonds. So they act as a middleman that connects buyers and say sellers to facilitate the transaction. So here they specialize in accounts for stock bonds and mutual bonds and others also. So the company receives compensation by means of commission or fees that are charged um, and uh, once the transaction has successfully completed. So here, uh, when we see um, brokerage firms, they are like that of a financial banks so here there is brokers when we say brokers these are the person who represents the uh, investors or the buyers of uh, equity shares and bonds in the stock market so they are the one who facilitates the buying and selling of this stock they also is the one who uh, manages also if you would like that if you would uh, allow them to do it for you they also can manage your uh, investment portfolio okay so of course this is for a fee so again uh, they have a similar uh nature with that of the investment bank so if you could see in the slides so there are uh a lot of uh, types of brokers Okay, and the different uh, transactions they, that they uh, are engaged with. So those are the different types of financial, mar uh, financial institutions. Okay, so the next uh, part or topic is about the financial markets and its classification. But of course, before we go to the classifications of financial markets, let us first define what financial market is. So here, when we say financial market, this is a market where buyers and sellers trade commodities, financial securities, foreign exchange, and other freely exchangeable items or fungible items. And derivatives of value at low transaction costs and at prices that are determined by market forces. So here, when we say uh, financial markets, this is like a typical market that you know. 
um, the usual market is where you can find sellers of the different products where the buyers go to buy those products or services. Now, when talking about a financial market, this is also like a place, okay? This is considered a place, although it can be a, uh, a virtual place or physical place where transactions of trade, trading of commodities, financial securities, foreign exchange, and other exchangeable items are uh, sold and uh, bought by the seller and the buyer. Again, when we say financial market, this is like a typical market. However, the products are different and they are, of course, related to financial and monetary uh, products or transactions. Okay, so after defining the fin what financial market is, let us go to the different classification of financial market. Okay, so the first type of uh, financial market is what we call capital market. Okay, so here, uh, when we say capital market, this is a market where the buyers and sellers engage in the trade of financial securities like bonds, stocks, and the like. So the buying or selling is undertaken by the participants such as, okay, so the buyer and seller can be an individual or an institution. So this market is a key source of funds for the entity whose securities are permitted by the regulatory authority to be traded. So since it can readily sell its debt obligation and equity to the investor. So of course, um, capital market is where the corporations who needs additional funding uh, sell equity and bonds and then uh, this is the place also or the market where those individuals or in institutions which has a surplus money to invest go okay to place their money for investment so this is where they uh, buy and sell those uh securities may it be equity or uh, debt securities or bonds okay so here um of course only those company who are or corporation who are uh, registered and allowed by the regulatory authority okay that are uh, allowed to that their shares can be traded publicly or uh, present in the capital market so here uh, government also use capital markets to raise funds so typically through the issuance of long-term bonds government do not issue shares and so cannot issue equity shares okay so here uh, the government also uh, can issue financial security or instrument but this is only in the form of a debt or bond certificate or security because in this case uh this is i mean taken place uh in the bureau of treasury this is one of the agencies of the government where you can buy or invest in bonds okay so meaning if you invest in bonds you are now considered to be the government's uh, creditor. So the government has the liability to pay for what you have invested. So here, uh, it is said that the government cannot uh, issue securities or equity securities. Why is that so? Um, the reason behind is that uh, we cannot sell, or the, the, the Philippines, for example, is not a cor corporation, which we can sell to anyone, and then anyone can own the Philippines, okay? So this is not a private or a 
commercial corporation. That is why the government cannot issue equity shares. That is the very reason. So they are only allowed to issue uh, debt or bonds or debt securities or bonds. Okay? So that is under the capital market. So again, uh, capital market is actually the same with that of the uh, investment banks. So you can go to the investment bank where they also uh, serve as a broker for buying and selling of those securities. Okay, so they also enter the capital market to do so. So the second uh, financial market is the money market. So what is money markets? So here, uh, money markets is where financial instruments with high liquidity and very short uh, maturities are traded. So unlike in uh, capital markets, by the way, capital markets deal with in long-term investments, while money market deal with short-term maturities uh, financial instruments. So here, uh, this is used by the participants as a means for borrowing and lending in the short term. So the maturity uh, normally lasts for overnight or just uh, less than a year. Okay, so again, uh, money markets is like that of capital markets. But in this case, we only deal with short-term investments. Okay, so the third uh, classification of financial market is the foreign exchange market. So here, uh, this is the market in which uh, the participants are able to buy, sell, and ex or exchange and speculate on currencies. So in this type of market, uh, what we can buy and sell is the different currencies okay, of the different countries. So here, foreign exchange markets are made up of, they can be uh, banks. So in, in the bank, they also offer buying and selling of um currencies okay commercial companies central banks investment management firms hedge funds and retail forex brokers and investors so again under foreign exchange market this is where you can buy and sell currencies okay, of the different uh, countries so for example if you would like to travel to uh the in for example you you would like to travel abroad so our peso which is the philippine currency um is not acceptable if you go for example in the us so they won't accept philippine peso as payment so what you're going to do is to uh exchange your philippine peso to us dollars okay so there is exchange rates that applies so meaning for every one dollar, US dollar, there is an equivalent uh, value of peso or Philippine peso currency. So it is advised that before you leave for the travel, you should have um, exchanged your Philippine peso to US dollars already. Or you can also do that when you arrive there in the US. But again, the point is that you have to... Uh, exchange your currency so that uh, that currency can be acceptable in that foreign country okay so this is um the example of uh or where uh currency foreign currency is uh needed so aside from travel you can also have this transaction of buying and selling to a foreign company or corporation in which the the payment will be in the form of a foreign currency okay so you should again buy or exchange that so that uh, they will be able to accept your payment so again if you would uh, need to exchange 
your currency to other currencies, then you should go to foreign exchange market or those uh, institutions which I have mentioned earlier. Okay, so the next market is what we call commodity market. So here, in the commodity market, so this is a physical or it can be virtual marketplace for buying, selling, and trading raw or primary products. Okay, so if you could see in the illustration uh, or in the picture, you can see there uh, commodities. Okay, so by the way, a uh, commodity market is divided or it is classified into two types. We have hard commodities and soft commodities. So when we say hard commodities, this is uh, where the typical natural resources that are required to be mined or extracted such as gold, rubber, and oil are being sold. Okay, so that is uh, the products under the hard commodity market. So the second classification is the soft commodities. So here, agricultural products or livestock such as corn, wheat, coffee, sugar, soybeans, and pork are being sold. So here, um, I don't know if you are aware that the Philippines also import and export uh, those types of uh, products which are also considered as hard and soft commodities. So here, uh, the, the country can sell hard commodities if we have or soft commodities also to other countries. And at the same time, the Philippines also are buying these types of commodities from abroad. So this is where, or this is the place uh, where these commodities are being uh, sold and bought by the buyers and sellers. Okay? So, those are for commodity markets. So, the next uh, classification of financial market is a derivative market. So, here, derivative actually is quite uh, complex in nature. So, this is one uh, market where um, financial transactions of financial security with value that is uh, or that rely upon on an underlying asset or group of assets take place. So here, when we say derivative, uh, this is a contract between two or more parties and its price or the price of the derivative is determined by the fluctuations of the value of the underlying asset meaning the value of this derivative can change depending of what uh, type of underlying asset that derivative was based upon okay so the most common underlying asset is so the derivative can uh, determine or base its uh, value on stocks bonds commodities, currency, interest rate, and market indices. So, again, this is a special type of financial security. Okay. So, for the last classification is the insurance market. So, in, in the previous discussion that we have under the financial institution, so we have mentioned about uh, uh, insurance companies okay so here this is related with the insurance market so this is the business of buying and selling insurance so here uh, the com uh, the companies are also involved in such transactions so they provide many products with different levels of complexity that, that were designed for different groups of people and business and other organizations. So again, in the insurance market is where you can buy and sell insurance products. 
Okay, so those are the different classifications of financial market. So you've learned there that we have different classifications and different types of financial uh, products that we can buy and sell. Okay, so depending on what is being offered. Okay, so that's for our uh, first half of the module.